I think we adult learners are a bit of a contrary bunch. We're notorious for overstretching ourselves. We know we shouldn't, but we're that bit maverick and we decide that we'll just do it anyway. Is that correct? Well, if you're looking for some ideas of how to make this a more reasonable endeavour, then stay tuned. If you're sitting comfortably, then let's begin. This is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists or indeed anyone who loves the piano to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first visit here, then please don't forget to subscribe. Just click on that little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now and it's all done for you. You know, I used to think that it was just me, but now I've come to the conclusion that Despite all of the advice telling us that we need to spend hours doing scales and doing our Hanon, we adult learners are a stubborn lot and we'll learn the pieces that we want to learn regardless. We're not going to let the fact that something appears too hard put us off. Josh Wright, in fact, made the comment in one of his recent videos that quite often his adult students will always tackle pieces of music that are a little bit beyond them and they're more than prepared to spend a year or more to get it right. And this sort of describes me. I mean, I spend probably 50% of my time trying to be more reasonable using Melanie Spansvik's Play It Again piano course to make sure that I'm, you know, practicing pieces more within the level that I am and moving forward gradually. But to be honest, I spend the other 50% of my time with my other pet projects, which are all pieces that are extremely challenging for me at the moment. Of course, we need to keep this in perspective, don't we? There are limits to what can be done. I remember seeing um, on, I think, I can't remember whether it was a Facebook or a Reddit post, and somebody said, oh, I'm a complete beginner and I just want to learn La Campanella. Please give me some tips. I mean, the only reasonable tip is go and get lessons for 10 years, spend a couple of hours a day practicing at least, then come back and we can maybe talk about it. However, if that person had said, you know, I've never played before, but I'd like to learn to play for Elise, then it's a more reasonable thing to try. Ultimately, there are definitely parts of Fur Elise that for an absolutely beginner would take loads and loads of time and effort to get right, but they're probably still achievable. So then, if we are intent on tackling pieces, it might be more sensible to leave until a later date. What's the best way to go about it? And I think the first thing is, we've got to get it into our minds that, you know, there are no hacks, there are no shortcuts. You need to look at this as being a long-term goal and as something that you'll work towards gradually. Then secondly, I think you have to think very, very hard about how you're going to practice it. Now I saw this picture that I've put on the screen here for you on Twitter ages ago and it really made me laugh out loud. It basically describes what myself and I guess a lot of other pianists have got a tendency to do. If we can't play something properly, we just keep playing through, playing through, playing through in the hope that eventually all of those wrong notes will come right. However, in general, this strategy doesn't work so well. I think instead, you need to take a bit more of a scientific approach by analysing the piece very carefully, looking for all of those things that might be difficult to do, whether that be chords, whether it be tremolos, whether it be staccato, whether it be scales, passage work, all of the things that can be in there. And we need to be fairly honest with ourselves about the things that we know we're going to struggle with. Of course, I think depending on your level, this is where having a good teacher will be extremely helpful. Somebody who can help you to spot all of these difficult technical things within the piece that you might not necessarily see for yourself. If you're a more advanced player, then of course you probably know enough to work out for yourself the things that will be difficult for you. Next, you need to research, research, and research. This is especially true if you don't have a teacher. 
I mean, if you have a teacher, then of course you're getting the benefit of the research that that teacher's already done, but you'll still need to do some of your own. For me, research includes things like listening to as many different versions of the piece as you can before you start trying to learn it. It includes downloading many different versions of the score so that you can look for fingerings, look for other things, compare and contrast. It also means being prepared to sit and listen to hours of YouTube tutorials on all the difficult areas in the piece that you're trying to learn, and if you can even find them on tutorials on the specific piece itself. Just one word of warning, of course, be a little careful about too readily accepting all of the advice you see on YouTube. I found three or four channels that I trust and that I watch more than anything else, and this normally is enough for me. And of course, in addition to the research, I recommend that you also build yourself a proper library of resources at home that you can call on all the time. For me, these are things like, for example, Graham Fitch's Piano Practice Series, which is essentially if you're needing to work out how to practice effectively. You've got also Rami Barniv's book on the art of piano fingering. Absolutely ideal for more complex material where you are definitely going to need to find efficient and effective fingering strategies for it. And then, of course, sit down and make yourself a detailed plan of how you're going to work through this. Don't just sit down and start practicing aimlessly. Pick particular things that you know are difficult and then work on strategies of how you're going to acquire the technique required to play those little parts. I've released a good number of videos in my practice ideas playlist, which I'll link here for you. These all look at how you can take something that you find technically difficult and then break it down into a set of more manageable exercises to help you practice it. Take, for example, the way I approached learning the second cadenza in Liszt Liebestraum number no. three, a whole set of exercises, both hands separately and hands together, to progressively build it from just groups of three, four, five notes to the entire thing. I think the key thing to remember and the key thing that I've learned over the past few years is that when you're practicing something, if you're doing exercises that involve repeating three notes, four notes, and you're doing that exercise and each time you repeat it, you're playing correctly, then you are actually practicing. However, if you're doing things where you're trying to play through or even just play a set of 10 notes and all the time you keep making mistakes, then given that practice makes permanent, what you're actually doing is practicing mistakes which means they'll be an awful lot more difficult to get rid of later. This means that you need to spend the majority of your time on repeating things correctly and then problem solving properly rather than just hoping it'll fix itself every time you have an area where perhaps you're getting a wrong note or you're not able to get the musical effect that you want. To quote Lewis Kentner, there is no such thing as a difficult piece. A piece is either easy or it's impossible. The process by which it migrates from one category to the other is known as practicing. Now I'd like to stress that I'm not saying you should always try and learn pieces that are too difficult for you. Of course I'm not. But if you're going to do it anyway, at least do it in a way that's likely to give you the best chance of succeeding. If you take Alan Rusbridger and Chopin's G minor ballad, you know the review I did in a recent video, then you'll see that he had to take a fairly scientific approach with that, a lot of guidance from his teacher. It took him more than 16 months of patient work, but in the end, he got there. If you're not already, then don't forget to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click that little bell icon, and then you'll be notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.